right, guys, we are back for NFC 24. That is right, Non-Fungible Cast 24, episode 24. I am here with WT and Tomahawk. He is back, guys. Whoa, WT, who is that guy? <laughs> wait, 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 who is that guy? Is that WT over there? Look at that, he's... He grew into a butterfly. It's gone, man. Look at that beautiful face. What's going on, WT? Uh, it is good to see your beautiful face uh, once again. Man, you look so young. I don't even know. Man, this guy looks so young. Uh, what's going on, man? Thank you, sir. I've been hiding behind this mic for like 10 minutes before we started this <laughs> because I wanted to catch you off guard. I was yeah, like, wait. <laughs> You've been saying it's going to go into uh, turn to a butterfly and fly away, and it did. Fortunately, it didn't take me with it, so I am still here. And a few pounds less right now. Jeez, man. You look so young right now. I don't even know if it's you. Is that really him? Uh, so, yo, WT, it looks awesome, man. Uh, beautiful butterfly. Tomahawk, what is going on? Uh, what is new? What's exciting? I want to get into that a little bit. We did a little event last night, uh, which I want you to break down a little bit. I want you to talk about it. Let's get to you first. Uh, Tomahawk, what is up, you beauty? What's going on, man? Hey, good to see you guys, man. I've been enjoying every single episode that you guys are putting out there. Uh, just really amazing to see how you're progressing and how, you know, you're getting into space and getting into different projects and really informing the GOG community uh, again. And you're definitely the, the, the go-to uh, for all G GOG info. Uh, so super happy to be back up here with you guys. And uh, yeah, uh, I've been quite busy, you know, uh, as everyone knows, real, real life gets in the way sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, promotion in my job. So that takes up more time, um, you know, but still continuing building. And uh, as you can see with the event, so I've been continuing building in the sandbox for the community and uh, trying to keep uh, O Canada A active in these, uh, you know, the bearish times where people <laughs> just seem to disappear for some reason. Yep. Um, but yeah, I I'm sure the excitement is definitely all there. And we're just a lot of people are just waiting for for things to do or for the game to come out uh, and stuff like this. But uh, we're still here to build this community and get more people in here. Yeah. So uh, first, I want to say thank you very much for the kind words. You know, we, WT put a lot of time into this, and and you know, we really want to be there for the community, and we, we love the community. You guys already know. Um, and another thing, you say, you know, you want to keep the the community active and stuff. You know, in this t in these times, you know, there's not a lot going on, and it's a, you know, obviously we're in a bear market right now, and, and it's things like what you're doing. You're putting these events together for the community. You don't have to do this stuff. This is uh, something that you're doing, and you have a passion for. And it was amazing. We're going to get into it. I definitely want to get into um, what happened. We, we hosted it. So last night I did a, I, oh, I hosted the uh, Guild of Guardians Sandbox Challenge on my Twitch channel. Uh, we had the Guild of Guardians community come through. It was great. It was a fun time. It's always a good time in there. And uh, we, I definitely want to get into that. We're going to break it all down and talk about it. Uh, WT, what's going on, you beaut? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, look at this guy. Look at the beautiful face. And what's new with you, man? Not much. Just like you said. It's the bear market, and my eyes are looking for where to build, what to build, what new to get into, uh, who are the people still remaining, like Tomahawk alluded to, a lot of people disappear, and they're still around. We still got our core uh, GOG DGENs, and, you know, like working with Tomahawk, there's other ones that we're working with, and we're building like this synergy together, and it's, it's kind of fun to watch because I think back to where it started back in March of 2021, and where we're at now and the relationships that we've established and grown and like we found in these relationships hey i've got this talent and we're like hey do you want to work and do something like this and that's a lot of the fun while we're waiting for this product to come out which is supposed to be coming out in the second half of this year which i'm super pumped about but i'm also am thrilled about tomahawk and his event it's tied to the sandbox uh, anybody that knows me knows i'm huge on the sandbox they are a marketing monster in addition to many other things that they are. But I love how you are tying in Guild of Guardians into it because it's bringing exposure over to the Sandbox community, integrating them with us, which is just a win-win, creating an even bigger monster. And my hat's off to you, Tom Hawk. I love it when you do these events and uh, looking forward to working with you in the future, man. Yeah, and I like, I like how you said, you know, how everyone has this different talents and, and we're putting together, you know, we have uh, people like Tomahawk making these games, we have, you know, podcasters, we have artists, we have all these people that have all these different talents that come together and it makes this like beautiful thing and, and it's, and that, and we didn't, you know, a year ago, none of us knew each other. So it's just really neat how you can, you know, you can come together through something like this, a common interest, a common love, you come together and boom, all of a sudden it's like, Hey, you know, you got, you got this, I got this, you got a piece of this puzzle. I have a piece of the puzzle. You have a piece of the puzzle and you come together and you 
you make this beautiful thing. So yeah, this is amazing, and 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 uh, it's you know I'm very thankful that you know we all got to meet each other and become friends and stuff. But enough enough about us. I want to talk about Tomahawk's event. Uh, like I was saying earlier last night, uh, I got to host it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to everybody from the Guild of Gardens community that came through and the Sandbox community that came through and and uh, you know hung out in the stream and we did a bunch of giveaways. Tomahawk did a bunch of giveaways. Uh, no Cadmus. Uh, we didn't give away a Cadmus last night. You know I tried, man. I tried, guys, but you know it just it wasn't a go. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, no, we uh, there was the giveaways. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun and uh, yeah. So I got to show the level and and, and how to do it and and the the creative mind, man. Tomahawk, your mind. Uh, I love it. How you come up with these ideas. The first one we're slaying zombies. This one we're we're, we're kicking balls. It's like a mini game, kicking balls into the lava. You got to get twenty of them. Uh, it's time based and it's just I, I love. The creative mind, the level design looks great. Why don't you break it down for us and tell us uh, how you got the idea and, and the design and, and just what goes through with it, man? Because I know you're a busy guy, man. You're running a guild. You're doing the game. You have a job. You got you know you got life, man. It's 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 tough. I tell you, man. As 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 uh, you know, people in the industry, it is tough uh, to find time to do this stuff. And I don't know how you do it, man. So tell us, break it down for us. Uh, yeah, for sure. So uh, event number one. Uh, was really so. So the whole idea behind uh, the Sandbrock projects, what, what I want to uh, bring to Gila Guardians, is having a social hub in the Sandbox metaverse where the Gila Guardians community can, you know, go hang out, play games together, uh, do stuff in the metaverse, um, and also give exposure to the everyone that's going through the Sandbox to what Guild of Guardians is and this. Super cool AAA uh, mobile game that's coming out uh, in in a while, and get them excited for that. So I, I just, I'm just waiting t for it to all tie together. When you know, as we know, Sandbox is still an alpha. There's we're, we're still limited in what we can build. Um, but the idea is when they unlock these things for all builders and everyone, uh, is that yeah, we want people in this. Uh, GOG themed world in the sandbox and we're just all connecting uh, you know the, uh, we could have a guild guild meetup or we could have an <clears throat> AMA where in my world Derek is on stage and uh, introducing new stuff or you know introducing uh, the sandbox character that uh, will ev hopefully eventually be dropped to uh, to us so they could be you know showcased there and stuff like that so so that's really the whole big idea I, I'm still a little limited in what I can create uh, as a builder, but I'm using that same world that has uh, the glade. It has, you know, the <clears throat> kind of horde, uh, horde in the in the underground, and then it has the empire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I wanted to concentrate this one on more of a mini game. Uh, as we know, event number one was the whole world, explore the world kill zombies, you know, save the bots so we can continue building. So we're still in that continuing building process, but at least we defeated all the zombies, so now the workers can continue building the world. And in the meantime, well, we as Guardians, we got to keep our training going, you know? Got <laughs> to stay sharp, got to make sure we're ready for when, uh, you know, for when we'll be asked to jump in Guild of Guardians and, you know, play. So... Um, so I thought a mini game would be a really nice opportunity, something a little shorter. So tr uh, try an event that's a little shorter. As uh, Capone, you saw, you, you did a run in six minutes, which uh, it, you're you know you're used to the controls. So that's about what somebody used to the controls can do. If not, there's still the uh, the training, uh, the tutorial that's open for the people learning, and they'll probably be you know being able to complete it in. You know, 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. So it's a lot shorter for, for everyone that participated in an event one that took them an hour, two hours on the first try. Um, <laughs> well, this, is a nice, this is a nice mini game. Uh, you go in, super simple, uh, but still fun because you have obstacles. You have skeleton. You can, you know, do a big attack and kill 20 skeletons, which, <laughs> which, all, which feels pretty good. And then you still have... Um, you know, trying to get the balls into the lava. And yeah, so what I, what I really like about this that I've added, it, it's a little more work, but anyone wanting to compete for the fastest time, there is now a prize pool for that. And uh, so basically there's a prize pool of uh, a thousand GOGs per difficulty level. And uh, you just have to record 
uh, your run, obviously, to make sure no one's cheating, no one is, uh, you know, using a cheat or destroying balls other way. We want to make sure the 20 balls go into the lava. What's the fastest time you can do it? Uh, but I think that adds on to the experience. So it is a price pool for, for partip participation based on your faction. I saw WT in there is trying to get his Empire faction to be <laughs> a, a little more active. We know that the Empire finished third in event number one, uh, followed by Glade. Glade had a really strong start in event number one, and somehow we, we were relegated to second. And then Horde, I don't know what happened with Horde, but the Horde, they just... You know, they was pretty silent, and then near the end, they just blew blew us out of the park. So, if we could get a, I would say a Glade winner for event number two, but at least if we can get together and defeat the Horde, I'd be happy with that too. <laughs> yeah, that was it was good, and, and and like I say, I like how you you this is a lot. It's a shorter one. Um, I, I think the level design was absolutely amazing, and, and yeah, you broke it all down pretty well there. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into it, man. I mean, I could, you can tell, like I tried to mess around with, uh, I've tried to mess around with, with the sandbox before trying to make a level. And I just, I mean, I don't have that creative mind. I don't know how you do it, man. Cause I definitely don't have the creative mind for it, but it's, 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 it's nice what you said. And another thing that, uh, that, uh, you didn't mention was I, what I like is there's three months for this, a three month competition. There's going to be, uh, all of June is going to be easy mode. Uh, July is going to be medium mode and then August is going to be hard mode. And I like that. I like how you're, you're even upping up the difficulty every month. So you're really going to get the hardcore, uh, people in there, you know, cause hard, I, I have a feeling hard is going to be hard. I have a feeling hard is going to be really, really, really hard. Uh, which is cool, man. Uh, WT, have you got to try it yet? No, I plan on trying it tonight. I did get to watch you do it and, uh, you were cracking me up. I, <laughs> what I like the most out of it so far that I've gotten to see was how the the skeletons can kick the ball back and <laughs> how frustrated it made you a couple of times that was cracking me up and then halfway through it i'm like wait a minute these are kickballs and uh i was like hmm i've often called morax a kickball i wonder if uh that was like done on purpose or just an accident or what so that made me laugh and then uh it was just fun seeing bruno run around and you know there's there's you know the involvement of having to kill some of them to make a path to kick the ball in the lava and then he found out, don't fall in the lava. That was hilarious. <laughs> and, and then in the chat, this is borderline yelling bomb on a plane. I don't know. There might be some legalia about this, but you saying, hey, there's a Cadmus involved. I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, got the chat going. So it was an overall good time. You did an excellent job with it. I like how it looked. It was very clean. It was very simple, but still fun. And uh gog backing it up with some rewards again that's just awesome how they're enabling the community to build things and then they're kicking in some perks to get the engagement a little bit of competition involved and yes the empire to get third last time i think we were all on vacation for the most part and we just we just tried to decide to take that one off because when we put our minds together and our and our desires we get the job done and i don't call it a bribe it's just the empire we're slick we're businessmen we don't do stuff for free that's just not how we roll so yeah i can put a little grease on the wheels to get the ball going here yeah i'm gonna do it yeah we we, we let them win the first time we were giving them a chance you yeah know, that's that's what, what's up uh yeah uh, again uh, tom a uh, great event a lot of fun uh great turnout thank you again everybody that came in and uh, i'm always looking forward to, to seeing what you're building uh, you're you're always on the ball man so um let's talk can about just, uh, yeah go ahead I just add i just want to add for the people watching that mac users that's a big one mac users can now uh download the game maker which is completely free and uh try to try out the challenge so that's a huge one uh, so hopefully we'll get more participation. And the idea of having a three month long with different difficulties is that we know that the next test net for uh, GOG is going to be probably after three months. Um, so that this gives something to do. Anyone new that comes into the Discord is like, hey, there's this event going on. And this is, you know, it'll be the same thing for the next three months. And the people that want to get to the top, they're super competitive. Well, you know what? You can do this event a hundred times to try and record your, you know, your best time and win some more GOG uh, tokens. So I, I think it's uh, really cool. Keep the community engaged and something to do. And then the builders, whoever's building GOG in the background, well, you know, they continue doing their their fantastic job.
that's that's oh, what I, I said. That. That's what I that's what I love, man. It's like when the when the ambassadors come together and they're trying, you know, because right now there isn't a lot going. On. There's a lot going on that we just don't see, you know, as as the community we don't see. The, the I know Gilded Guardians, they're they have their heads down, they're going hard. They've been really active on you know socials and really out there. They've been really putting the pedal down, um, you know. But as far as you know, um, something for us to do. There's not a lot out there right now, which is that's just the way it is. It's they're in building mode. They're doing a great job. So for you coming out and doing this, it really gives the community something to do to keep busy, to keep interacting with each other. And, and I love, I respect that. I love it, and I respect it, man. So yo, uh, big, big, big shout out to you, man, for that. That's that's amazing. You put yeah, a lot of work, to you, man. Hundred percent, man. That's that's what it's about, man. The builders, man. They're building, and you're you're killing it, man. All right. I don't so see anybody else? I don't see anybody yeah. else doing this in the communities that we're involved in, and I'm in quite a few. So hats off to you, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, let's talk about, speaking of uh, the Guild of Guardians and, and what they're doing, let's talk about, uh, you know, we'll look back a little bit at the alpha and stuff. I know we've talked about it quite a bit, but I guess some numbers came in. So uh, the quality and, and uh, control, there was over 7,500 players, 7,500 players that played in the alpha, uh, 99% uptime. That means that less than 0.01% uh, crashes. Like I've said before, I personally didn't get any crashes at all myself i know i know people did but i personally didn't see a single 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 one uh which is crazy it's a pre-alpha and it was so smooth it played so well i mean it, it was incredible it's better and i'll be honest man i'm gonna say this right now on record that was better than any game i've played any any play to earn game that's released right now that pre-alpha blew it out of the water smoothness gameplay everything blew it out of the water it was better than any game i've played uh that's play and earn or play to earn or whatever uh right now the average player spent one hour per day and here's the thing so when, we, when the game first when they first mentioned that dungeons were bringing two minutes i'll admit i was a little bit like why would they do that like two minute dungeons it doesn't make sense to me like there's no momentum how are you gonna you know you're going in a dungeon how are you gonna get the momentum it's over before it starts but then when i played the pre-alpha now i get it now i understand and i actually prefer that i'll be very honest with you I prefer that these dungeons are two, three minutes, four minutes, six minutes, whatever it is, rather than 20 minutes. You have a couple of minutes to play a game. You throw on your phone, boom, you bang out a, a dungeon in two minutes, you move on, you know? And I like that. I actually really, really like that now. So that was really cool. Uh, and they say, yeah, so people spend an average one hour per day. Now, we got to remember there was no energy booster, right? There was no energy booster in this. So it'll probably, I don't know, we don't know how the energy booster is going to work exactly yet, but you can expect it to be a little bit more than an hour, I guess. Uh, and the retention was 45%. Uh, that is pretty awesome. What do you guys think about all those stats? So 7,500 players, 99% uptime, which is just phenomenal. Uh, av uh, about an hour, average about an hour a day. What do you guys think of that? What do you think about the two-minute dungeons and all that stuff? Tomahawk, I'll give it Quite to you tough. first. Good. <laughs> there. Um, yeah, I was a little skeptical like you when I first heard this two, two uh, three-minute dungeon. Um. But no, like it really works. And uh, I've been trying out just for research purposes, the uh, Diablo Immortal, right? Same, same, uh, same. Uh, that came out. And so I'm playing Diablo Immortal and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of missing this little fast-paced dungeon I'm, I'm done with. And then I can go back to doing something else and then come back to it later. And this one here, you kind of have to sit and play it for a while, right? Because there's the whole lore and it's, it's just a different style of game uh two different style of games but uh yeah i definitely appreciated the way they made it uh, it's a little more competitive a little more fast-paced a little more get your dungeon uh dungeons done and everything um but yeah it'll be interesting to see how they can do to incorporate the lore which is might be a little harder right. in something where you have these dungeons that you're going in you're completing quickly and you're trying to advance uh, as opposed to the outload but that that that'll be super interesting. Uh, in in terms of of the uh, the the pre alpha, uh, yeah, it it ran super smooth. I was definitely expecting uh, bugs, expecting downtime, expecting something like you would in any pre pre alpha. Uh, no, it, it literally ran very smoothly. And what they wanted to test, they were definitely capable of testing it. And you know, that's some of some of the comments in terms of the equipment and all of that. Like this is all stuff they knew. Like they right. knew that they were giving an unfinished product, and these are people that build RPGs for a living. So there's a lot of the feedback that that we see is like, well, yeah, that that of wasn't course. really the point of the pre-alpha, but at least seeing it this early, anything that could be changed or could be improved is a lot easier for them to do it at this stage with the community community feedback, which is amazing. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that for sure. And like I say, with the with the um, 
the two minutes dungeons, it's definitely hard for the lore. It's almost like you're sacrificing a little bit of the lore to to up the quality of life so it's you know it's and i'd rather that i'd rather for me personally i'm okay with sacrificing some of the lore to have these quicker dungeons and you know so you're not stuck on your phone all day man you know like you said i play diablo immortal as well and uh it, you feel like you're stuck there playing it for a lot longer where this one here you know if you have a couple minutes to jump in do a dungeon see you later you know what i mean uh wt what are your thoughts on it as well very similar uh to both of you with when i first heard the quick two minute dungeons i was like what uh, it just goes to the testament of the team and their ability to innovate and think big picture. Uh, it's it, it was not a big deal. Uh, and for people that are super busy like us and we're gamers, it kind of fits in because you can just, for me, it was like, I just want to keep my energy spent so it keeps recouping right. and then I'm maximizing my energy uses. So I would bang out one or two uh, quick dungeons and then go back to my real life that because I was on vacation at the time this was going on. So I didn't want to be on my phone all the time and make the wife mad and, you know, neglect my family. So I was real quick do a couple, put it away, let the energy recharge come back to it. So I think that's a real nice feature. And then if you are hardcore, you can just keep going and keep playing away until you run out of energy. And then, yes, the energy boosters will come along. So I think they're kind of they're covering both sides. If you want to be hardcore, be hardcore. If you just want to play here and there and have a little bit of fun, earn a little bit, then you can do that, too. So my hat's off the team. Very innovative idea. Definitely a different genre other than Diablo. And also, you can get some of your money back, unlike Diablo, where people are dropping 110K. 110K. But they're going to be mad at the NFT industry. They're freaking crazy. But you know me, I love this. I love this product. <laughs> I've said this so many times. Like, you know, I play other games, Marvel, uh, Strike Force, or Diablo Immortal, whatever. These games, you, you, it's pay to win. All these games are known as pay to win. But as soon as you get a play and earn, it's like, no, they, they can't wrap their head around it. It's like, wait, you mean you can make money instead of just spending your money and, and doing nothing with it. yeah and they, they say no that doesn't work no that's that's no we, we can't accept that but though they're more than happy to throw money at a game and get literally nothing for it nothing right so i don't understand that man i i don't know maybe i'm missing so i don't understand it anyway so um all right they successfully integrated custodial wallets to all the new players on the start wt uh let's break that down baby this is probably the biggest announcement out of the dev diaries in my opinion since day one they, they, they're probably their two core concepts has been make the game fun and make easy onboarding. The custodial wallet announcement means that you can go to the app store and use a simple email sign up and you were on playing and that for the masses, which is what they have said they want to target with millions and millions of people that paves the way to get the masses on and they don't have to be crypto native, but at the same time, they will have a non-custodial wallet for the crypto native to do what they want to do on their own private wallets. And then they also said in the uh, the live uh, AMA on YouTube, they will eventually have it to where you can bounce back and forth. So, I mean, pff, huge, huge announcement. It's not the sexiest announcement, but by far, in my opinion, it's the, uh, the biggest one. Well, if they're looking for, you know, I, I, can't, I always forget the number. I feel like I inflate it every time I say it, like 18 billion people playing, you know, it's like 18 billion people. But I always feel like every time I say the number, it gets bigger and bigger. I'm pretty sure it started at like 5,000, then we're at 50 million. I don't even know what it is. Anyway, 20 billion players they want to get on the on the game. Uh, you know, anyway, whatever the number is. But that's the way to do it is is easy onboarding. Emails, stuff like that. That's the way to do it. Once once people have to connect wallets and stuff, that's where people get scared. And that's where people just some people don't even understand. You know, they just don't understand. So if you want to get that mass onboarding, yeah, the email uh to make an account, that's that's the best way to do it for sure. Um I I'd say that's uh, that's amazing. It is big news. I mean, it doesn't sound big, but I think that's huge, especially for what their aim is and their goal is. That's a a huge uh, uh, step uh, to get there. Okay, so they're working with uh, new technologies and uh, need the backend game client. Okay, what's this? Uh, reasons for the first initial delay. Oh, this is yeah. So they talked about why they the first initial delay. Uh, what it was. They they're working with new technologies and need the backend uh, game client and Immutable X to be all connected. Um, see, here's the thing, and, and, and here's the thing, and there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, Mutable X will be all connected and talking to each other in a scalable and robust way. The second is uh, that there's a lot of different blockchain features within Gilded Guardians, token payouts, uh, merging heroes, all that stuff, you know, the gear, all that stuff. And it is a lot of moving parts. It is a lot of moving parts. And especially in a game like this, especially again, like we're saying, you want to onboard so many people, you have to be firing on all cylinders. You have to be getting it right. And I like that they're not rushing things out. We've seen projects that rush things out and they have to change on the 
fly and you know you're gonna it doesn't work you cannot survive that way if you're if you're throwing the product out and then fixing it that is not the right way to do this stuff you got to have the product ready send it out and then kind of tweak it as you go but if you're just kind of throwing things out and hoping for the best i mean you know it's not good so i like how they're doing it slow they're making sure everything's firing on all cylinders uh and all that stuff so uh tomahawk what are your thoughts on you know the delay the reason about it uh and what are your thoughts on moving forward for them uh, well, yeah, like they're saying, they're working on a lot in the background. And I think it comes to what Derek is saying, that he wants to use the blockchain to enhance all the gaming features, not just to use it to just for earnings or uh, little things, but he wants to incorporate the blockchain in a lot of the game features. Uh, so when, he, when we look at uh, what's being integrated, like the token payout, the merging heroes, salvaging, uh, guild crafting, guild recipes, marketplace, the custodial wallets we talked about, all of those elements, and these are the ones uh, mentioned, but apparently there's more elements. Uh, these are the ones mentioned that do need this integration uh, of the blockchain. And for me, like the guild crafting and token payout is one big one. Like how do you have uh, 20 different people in a guild or more each giving items to craft something and then that gets crafted which is an nft it automatically goes to the market and then uh you know in the blockchain it has to be said that when it's sold everyone that you know gave materials to create this get that cut get a cut and then the guild leader gets a cut so all that has to be really programmed and well and uh, with, with all the intricacies of just that for guild crafting so that's just one element right. but there's other elements that they're they're building on so i, I can see uh definitely why the delay uh, even normal games have delay but they're trying to really take the good aspects of the blockchain and insert them in every aspect of this game which is something that you know we we haven't seen yet with other play and earn or play to earn games and that made is probably why they're they're so confident about what they're building is because there aren't too many people actually looking at it that way oh for sure and and just and like i said just that one aspect is is tricky enough i mean how are they gonna make it work but these guys the team behind it i mean we have so much faith in it it's it's unbelievable if there's one if there's a team that's gonna get it right it's these guys for sure but that's the thing is they're taking their time they delayed they're taking the time they're doing it right they're not gonna throw the product out have it broken and you know have all these problems they're doing it right and i'd rather that personally i'd rather a real good product come out than a, a half-assed product and then it's all broken and then people get frustrated and leave so you want a good product to come out people are satisfied people are happy and they and they move forward uh so they did some ux new ui improvements uh wt you want to break that down for us pretty much one of my biggest uh i, I absolutely love when a company looks at quality of life features and it might not seem like a big deal to people but like a few less clicks through screens that you don't need to multiply that by how many times a day you're doing it times how many how many times a year you're playing that game it adds up and uh, we got to save our fingers especially as we get older because the arthritis starts setting in and it hurts and ow my fingers why are you breaking my fingers Derek no I'm kidding <laughs> uh but you know they look at the quality of life aspects uh some aesthetics that go into the game they're re-examining them i know a lot of people were griping about like it didn't look as clean and crisp as what they had seen in previous videos and stuff from but they 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 came out and said like yeah we had to do like that because it's a testing phase and we're going to be up in that so they're looking at that um they're just they're looking at every feature to help the player cycle through their gear properly and to be have that strategiz strategizing mindset and give you the tools to be able to do it very easily so that you're not limited to strat with your strategy because, oh, I clicked the wrong way. And I don't know if that really makes sense, but that's kind of what they were looking at. And it's it's a huge it's a huge component to the overall fun factor of the game. Because if you get frustrated trying to click through things needlessly, then you're not having fun. And that's what they're about is having fun. 
Yo, you said arthritis, man. This is something we never even thought of in our 20s. You know, we're not 20 anymore, <laughs> none of us. No. You know, we're not 20 anymore. He said arthritis. And I'm like, man, I feel you. Like, I, I get you now, you know? I mean, I'm not 20 anymore. Uh, but yeah, you're right. And and, I, and it looked like, and to me, it looked like they slowed the game down a little bit too when they were, when, mm-hmm. when I saw Caitlyn playing. It looked like they slowed it down a little bit. I kind of like that a bit. Um, all right, so they got the bots working together with Gods and Chain, the entire IMX team, uh, to learn from their experience uh, to be ahead of the dreaded bots. Uh, let's break that down, WT. What do you know about that? <clears throat> uh, yeah, the, I mean, it's it's been brought up uh, in various AMAs about, like, are they conscientious of people creating too many wallets and running bots? And it, it would ruin the game. It would ruin the game because you would have an inflation cycle kick in because they would be just trying to extract and make money, and it would ruin it for us. So they're very conscientious of that. And they're leaning on that umbrella of Big Daddy IMX and anything underneath it. And Gods and Chain is a sister company within that umbrella. And they've already been out for longer with playing, actually. So anything that Gods and Chain has been through, they're sharing it with GOG and helping them out. And I absolutely love that, the collaboration. It's not just us versus them guys and chain versus gog it's we're in this together underneath this imx umbrella because we're all pushing the the big daddy imx and that's just that's awesome that's how a corporation should do it one thing i was i was gonna say too when they said about the here's the problem there's always when you have easy onboarding there's pros and cons to that right easy onboarding means it's easy to get the player base in but it's also for you know bots and stuff like that it's easy on their end as well so that's one thing i immediately think of is okay well What's going to stop people from making just hundreds of accounts and, you know, doing whatever they're going to do? Because you're going to get free heroes to start with. Uh, is there a way where, you know, you can have a guild and have just your all your alts in there, send your heroes over, start using your heroes? There's got to be ways to counter that if they're going to be if it's going to be that easy to onboard i mean there's people are going to figure out a way for anything anyways i mean the gameplay style there's so many things to look out for and uh and uh yeah easy onboarding causes more i mean it's easy to get people on but there's smart people out there that are going to figure out a loophole somehow and uh it's gonna be interesting man it's gonna be interesting what do you think about that about um uh tomahawk what do you think about uh the bots and and all that stuff in the game because you know we know they ruin all the the white uh, not the white list but the um you know the you know the the I'm sales gonna... that come yeah exactly it's just like things sell out in in three seconds or how is that even possible you know what i mean or half a second mm-hmm. things are sold out you, you can't even click that fast the bots are, are it's a problem it is a problem what are your thoughts on it uh, tomahawk yeah i mean bots can can ruin a, a really good project just by themselves and the fact that they're, they're looking at this and they point out this is a that they know this is a big issue and the fact that they're trying to address and putting efforts and putting resources into okay what are all the different things that we can do in regards to this uh but that is so so important in this uh, crypto gaming because you're you're paying out money to people like there were bots issue in in web 2 when they weren't even playing paying money out to right. people <laughs> so imagine now um yeah i think whoever will be able to best you know handle bots and make sure they don't uh they don't have like an effect on the the economy basically that's what we're trying to do is what we're trying to do is okay if there are bots fine but we don't want them to have an effect on the economy and we want to have as little as possible and you know we we want our the people playing the game are actually people playing the game so i really like that they're looking into this and it, that it's a main concern for them yeah for sure that that bots i mean i like that they're looking at it right now and they're not waiting until it becomes a problem uh for sure uh let's talk about the level design <clears throat> um you know replayability that's a thing so you know like a lot of people when we did the 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 pre-alpha we could get what was it brimstone 12 that was the the, the farthest we could get so yeah, here's the I'm thing sorry. Um, they got to make, I mean, maybe not every single level, but I, you know, then they did the, uh, they did that contest, right? So it was brimstone four that we, you know, the fastest runs and stuff. So, uh, I've talked about this before. I like that. I like the idea that they did competition. I think that was really nice. And they didn't have to do that, but I felt there was also like almost a downside to it where, you know, this is a pre-alpha. We're trying to find bugs. We're trying to find problems. And when you put a comp and it was a great idea and I'm very thankful they did this, but it's like now only people are playing one level. They're not even playing the level to find bugs. They're playing the level just to like to beat it as fast as they can. So what they need now, there was replayability to that because there was an event atta- attached to it. But 
what 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 they need to do is if they have you know say 50 levels they got to figure out a way to get people playing all over the place you don't want people just you know repeating one level you know whatever brimstone whatever let's just say 12 again let's just use as an example who's going to want to run that for three months you know every day in and out one level two minutes in a, you're gonna you know you're gonna be able to do it with your eyes closed it's not gonna be fun it's gonna become a job that's when games don't become fun anymore it's when it becomes oh i have to do my dailies today i have to do this like when you when you start saying I have to, that's when the game's not fun anymore. You you want to be like I want to, you know, like when your energy's out. Oh man, I wish I had more energy. I want to play more. Um, how are they going to combat that? What's their what's their plans? How are you going to stop that from the game becoming stale and running one mission every single day over and over uh, for three four months? They got to have some kind of thing. So maybe have like in game events. Or, you know, certain drops only drop in certain levels or, you know, they got to do something. What's a what's a plan they could do, Tomahawk, to kind of counter that? Uh, well, I mean, they kind of talked about a few ideas that uh, they, they could be looking at. Uh, maybe having the dungeons not be as linear uh, uh, as they were uh, when we tried them. Maybe there's different paths you can go uh, in the dungeons that brings you to different items or different rewards. Uh, so that could be one way uh, that they're looking at uh, any optional quests, secondary quests uh, so, uh, in these different levels. Um, yeah, so I think the uh, that's really a, one of the big ones is the replayability. Um, be, because if it's short, if it's quick and people go through it, they just want to go to the next one, to the next one. Mm -hmm. But if they have any events, challenges, or even in the level itself, if they have it in a way that, you know, maybe the the enemies appear randomly or it's different. Every time you run that dungeon, maybe the setup is random where, well, it, it's different every time. So, uh, or the drops are different every time or something's different every time. Uh, so that, you know, I kind of, you want to go back to it because, well, I didn't get this one or I didn't do this or, you know, I, I want to run through it the most efficiently, but I'm waiting for that. That, that one loop they'll give me the, the best time or something like that. But there, there's a lot that they, they can do. And I think the, the fact that they're looking at improving the level design uh, constantly, not just graphically, but, but the fun and the player experience of actually going through that level, um, yeah, is, is really bullish. So I, I can't wait to, to see differences in wanting to do the same level uh, over and over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good answer. WT, thoughts on that as well? This is a huge task, and I, I don't know. I'm not a game designer, so I don't know how hard all this is. But like what Tomahawk was saying, each time you go in there, it's a little bit different, and maybe you have two or three paths you can take. But once you take the one path, you can't go back and do a complete, full clear of the dungeon. Maybe, but maybe the maybe the paths are random too, so you don't know what you're gonna get. Mm -hmm. Maybe the items are a little bit different in each path, so. You've got that incentive to go back in. Like you go in, you go down that path. Ah, I didn't get the exact item that I wanted. It's not bad, but I wanted a different one. So you got to go back in and try it again. And Josiah was talking about maybe have a secondary quest in there. And I got to give my my hats off to Josiah. I, I love honesty. I really do. I think honesty is the best way in in these games. And he he literally said, "I'm not happy with this. I'm not." And I, I was glad he said it because it shows that he cares and he wants to make it engaging and fun. And it's a very difficult task, and I don't know how they're going to do it exactly and if they can pull it off. But the fact that they're trying, that, 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 gives, me, that gives me confidence that they really care about the product. And uh, we've seen time and time again, they're not only looking at the macro uh, aspect of it, they're looking at the micro aspect of it as well on everything. And they do it on everything, including these dungeons. And I, I wish them the best of luck of this. It is a giant task, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they come up with yeah for sure for sure i i can't wait yeah exactly i can't wait for the other modes and stuff like we got to remember they're going to be adding other features as well so um yep. yeah can't wait to see how it all uh, plays out for sure okay um the guild of guardians has experienced incredible growth we've talked about this where they they're up i don't even remember what it is like i don't remember it's they started with like four or five people, three people. Now they're up to like 200 and something. They've been doing insane amounts of, of, of growth. Um, they've almost doubled the team since the beginning of the year, which is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, they brought amazing, strong uh, people with, with good uh, backgrounds, good, uh, good uh, experience in the backgrounds and stuff. What do you, what is their, so they, like I say, they've been hiring like crazy. Do we have any idea what they're looking for? I know they had a, um, a thing out just recently where they're looking for people. They, you know, I, I, like I've said it before in the last video, uh, I am 
I, I'm thinking of applying to it. You know, it'd be cool to kind of work for these guys. Uh, but they're 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 out there. They're trying to get more people. They're trying to get a bigger team. Um, what are some of the things they need? What do, what do we think they need, and what are they missing right now that they could really use? What do you think, uh, WT? Well, that's a good question. Oh boy, they they have been on a hiring spree. There are over a hundred people that are working on GOG, but their core team is around twenty right now, and the. Even though it's only 20, the quality aspect of the people they have involved is just, it's through the roof. And they're not just hiring anybody. I heard Veronica Fu on the other day. I heard Justin Hulong on the other day and I've heard, heard him before. And they're very, very confident. You can tell they're very well spoken and they know what they're talking about. They come from marketing backgrounds. They know the business. And that's the people that IMX is going after and giving to Gilded Guardians. Uh, they've hired new artists, and we haven't even seen what the artists are exactly working on yet. Just little tidbits here and there. Um, they've got Howie with the, the game economy. I don't know. Maybe maybe he could use a little bit of help to like take some, uh, some of the workload off him. Uh, but in general, uh, I mean, Derek said they're going to be hiring uh, 2x more of what they have now. So I'm, I'm assuming their core team is going to go up to about 40. It's wild. And yeah, I mean, I'm not in a position to say what they need, but if I could guess one thing, it would probably be maybe another uh, apprentice economist or another really good economist to uh, take some load off of Howie, maybe because he's got a, he's got a huge task on him. Uh, you you can only cram so many devs into a kitchen to where you're actually going backwards in progress. Right. You know, you can't have too many cooks in a kitchen. That's just the way it goes. And maybe they you need, have a giant kitchen. Maybe they so need a couple podcasters, you know, maybe a game builder. Well, I don't yes. know. I mean, you know, you know, you, now that you say that, yes, you they know. have a referral program for referring people. So Guild of Guardians, you listen, I would like to refer Capone, a.k.a. Oh, Bruno the Beauty, <laughs> and collect that bounty on when he, uh, he, he actually <laughs> destroys everything for you guys, you guys in a good well. way. They, you know, maybe they need a game designer, podcasters. You know, maybe we're all, you know, we, we can all just yeah. maybe, you know, we can all, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the, the uh, yeah, there's like I said, you said they're gonna two times. There's a lot, man. They've been doing hiring like crazy. I've been following, I've been listening to what they're saying on, you know, on Twitter and stuff. These guys are not slowing down, and, and you know, we are in a bear market right now, as, as we all know. But these guys are like, no, 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 we're we're not done. We're going deep, and they're going deeper and deeper, which is, you know, it's to me that is uh, that makes me more confident in them. The fact that they're like, no, no, we're building even if it's a bear market a lot of people are kind of pulling back and they're like no 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 no, we're going full steam ahead that makes me uh more confident now let's talk about nick we're gonna talk about nick you know nick um yeah he he mentioned you know why don't you wt why don't you take this one i know nick's a good buddy of yours as well let's why don't you take this one buddy boy uh we kind of knew this was coming Mm -hmm. uh we've been really quiet about it and uh yeah he's been there since day one uh He's been there since day one with us uh, in March of 2021. Huge part of the community. Uh, you get to build relationships with these people. And it's, I'm not going to lie, it's a gut punch to see him go. I, I know that there is absolutely zero negativity of why he's leaving. It's just uh, for his own personal choices. And I'm respecting his privacy. And I'm just going to keep it at that. I do know he wants to travel the world. That is true. I've talked to him personally about it. Uh, he is going to be around, and I don't know. It's it's up to him what he wants to do, but I never say never. Who knows? Who knows? He, he might be back. He might not. But uh, we've got a great team here as is, and uh, Nick, if you're watching, you're always welcome to come on the show. You know we love you. You're a huge part of this. No matter what happens, you'll always be a part of this. Uh, the, core, the core here will always remember. Yeah, Nick's a beaut for sure. Nick's a beauty, man. A uh, lot of love, a lot of respect for Nick, 100%. Man, yeah, you know he's wants to travel the world, man. I mean... Now's the time to do it, man. Just do it. And, and uh, yeah, if that's the thing you want to do, that's the thing, man. No regrets, right? For sure. Uh, so, yeah, big shout out to Nick, man, and all the best, you know, for sure. Okay, I want to talk about this. Uh, builders Fund. All right, I want to, uh, Tomahawk. You're a builder, man. You're a builder. You're a, you're not just a builder. You're like the build. I think you're the builder. I think you're the one. And you're like, well, you know, you're the the builder. So uh, we're excited to support community builders with GOG Builders Fund. Uh, this one will directly support creative projects being pitched and worked on. More details will be shared in the future. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I think you like this. I'm sure you love this. What do you? Uh, what are your thoughts on it? W. Uh, 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 Tomahawk. Oh, this is really great for, you know, anyone building and trying to promote and build the community 
And yeah, th th these initiatives are all going to help, you know, GOG and basically like, like we see all these APYs be, being built that are crazy. These, these websites, uh, GOGheroes.com, like a lot of people in the community, like, are doing amazing things, uh, you know, out of their own free will because they just love the project and they love the idea of digital ownership and, you know, they want to be involved in this new way of disrupting it in a better way for gamers to, you know. Uh, so I, I love, I, I can't wait to see what it'll look like and how it apply. You know, it might be like the grants or, you know, it might be, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be very structured. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great because it means that people that spend a lot of their times doing this, they'll be, you know, be able to be rewarded for it. Um, and which means they'll continue building it. Uh, yeah, and you're... you can only do so much with your time. And if somebody elsewhere is willing to reward you for the same thing you're doing, uh, uh in one project, that's not being rewarded. Well, I, I think we, you know, we would all go somewhere where we're being rewarded and, thanked and we we're receiving something for our work so this is awesome and like joji doesn't have to do everything themselves and something like this means that the community members that have different talents they can be you know brought in and you know they can help build the ecosystem and i think where where they're missing i think you were we were talking about earlier uh about in which aspects staffing they're missing or whatever to me it'd be that community building that's so important in web three. Let's continue in that sense. Like they have, it feels like two people doing the grunt of the work uh, on what's facing the community, which is Ryan and Kalia, which are doing fantastic yeah. jobs mm -hmm. with, with everything community facing. Um, but I can see how this could be a lot on them. And a, I could see how uh, how Nick did a wonderful job for the year he was here in that community facing role, uh, but I think it's it's undervalued on how how much these guys really do and how much how draining it can be to have that community facing role uh, and everything that they're they're doing. So so it'd be nice to have more people community facing, uh, help structure uh, the, the ambassador group better. Uh, help structure people they want to build and and then once that is all structured once the game is about ready to launch that's where your marketing comes in uh, because we they alluded to the fact that yeah they want big budget for marketing and i agree with that and i also agree that you need to wait till the right time to market because you can dump money into a super bowl and now like we were talking yeah. about Doing a Super Bowl ad and then you know have a game coming out. <laughs> we'd have lost the same amount of people. We'd have the same amount of people building right now yeah. in the community right now. If there was that Super Bowl ad and it would have been for absolutely nothing. So they're they're very strategic in where they're, when they're investing and where they're investing and, and whatnot. And I think that the community is currently underutilized. And if that could be structured a little better with this building projects, with other ambassador projects, uh, we re re rewards in whichever way, like we see in their chart for tokens, there's reward allocation for community building. How is that going to look like? So right. maybe this is the start of building towards that and towards having a strong core of people of ambassador that are promoting this game. So I, I really love it. You put you you bet, you hit the nail on the head on so many things. One, I think the ambassadors could use definitely more of a of a structure. Um, the marketing thing, you're you're absolutely right. The marketing has to be timed properly. If you do it too early, well, you know the ones that come in, they're just going to go out just as fast when they come in if nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you've you've nailed a ton. I completely, completely, completely agree with with a lot you were saying. Ryan and, uh, and Kalia being the the face. That is draining. I know firsthand, you know, like we, like we know here, man, I stream, I stream as for a living, you know, there's people messaging you all the time and you have questions you got to answer. You're the face of the product and it's, and, uh, you know, these guys are dealing with it on a way bigger scale and you're dealing with a lot of people's money. So they're dealing with it and, and I deal with it on my end, but it's, it's not even close to what they have to do. So trust me, I know when you, when you say it's draining and stuff and it seems like they never sleep. They're they're always busy, they're always mm -hmm. around, they're always doing something. The these guys a huge huge shout out. Like I I have tremendous respect for them cuz I know, I know firsthand 
<clears throat> how how taxing it can be and i only do it at a fraction of what they do they have you know overhead they have people above them that you know they have the community looking at them they have bosses too looking at them they're getting it from all angles and trust me i know how taxing that can be so um yeah huge shout out and you're right the the ambassador program i think the builders thing was needed i think it helps because all of us do this out of the love of, of the community. None of us are, are forced to do this. None of us have to do this. We do it because we love the community. We believe in the game. We want to see it succeed. And we're trying to do our part to help it out, you know? So, um, yeah, you you crushed that answer. That was great. WT, any uh, additional thoughts on it as well? No, you guys pretty much covered it all. The The clarity aspect is my biggest uh desire to see. And it's not like they're doing a horrible job. It's just a lot of us, and, and this is, I'm talking just, strictly for me and I, I think some others a lot of us are winging this we've never done this before this is right. all i i wasn't expecting to do this uh, a year and a half ago i didn't i got into this space blind and i just been kind of feeling my way around and we're, we're literally just winging this so you know i've reached out to justin kruger and said hey if you see something we're not doing right or that we could do better let us know and i i think i think everybody kind of wants that like we're, we're guessing here. I think we're doing okay. Not just us, everybody around us in, in the community that's building and doing these things. So I think if they see something they don't like, they might reach out to us and tell us. But uh, yeah, I it, it's a hard thing to do. It's probably a hard thing to do on their end to structure it. And I think they're feeling it out too. It's We're all guessing here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but we're guessing sure. well because we got a great product, right? So nah. yeah, that, that's my final thoughts on that. So Now, Guilds 2.0, <laughs> let's talk about it. Uh, you know what? We have a guild leader right here. Let's talk about it. So uh, current models don't have the right partnership incentive structures, which result in a long-term win-win for all. Tomok, you are a guild leader yourself. Let's talk about it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if this applies to <laughs> uh, the smaller guilds. Uh, I could see um, maybe it does, but I could see big guilds and huge amount of players, uh, how that can affect uh, and everything. Uh, in terms of how they're set up and like we talked before uh, about scholarships in this game and it's you know we don't see necessarily the point of having scholarships in GOG so how does that look for guilds wanting to invest and bring players in uh, you know are they looking to I, I think I think GOG really wants to see how they can work with guilds and how everyone can benefit out, out of this uh, so so that is bullish because these guilds are have huge player bases now there are so many of them that are backed by you know companies and big right. stuff so i don't consider myself in that 2.0 necessarily but we're also as you know important as the big guys because there'll be a lot of small guilds like oh canada a and whatnot um that could have a potential aspect so the fact and and it's nice because being one of the earlier guilds, um, like it's really nice to receive a shout out from GOG, you know, mentioning our guild and what we bring. Like we're bringing stuff to the table, uh, you know, we're giving our feedback, we're doing all of this stuff, and we can help going forward. Uh, like one of the, an idea I have uh, for Canada, a, for example, is th there's all this uh, aspect of pay to win versus free to play, right? So, so, so something where O Canada can could help out is, well, we could assign a guild token to completely free-to-play. What does that mean? It means that when the game's launched, we can compare exactly how a free-to-play guild that starts off with no funds fares out against mm -hmm. somebody that has heroes in the start. And another way is to inject free-to-play players in all our guilds. So that in a, in a guild, you'll be able to see, well... What does a free to play? He this guy started off with nothing. Where is he compared? So I think all that is going to give a lot of information to GOG, and that's where I see like guilds like ours and giving feedback every time the test net is out and getting our collective feedback from our community and sending it to them. Um, so that's where I see we can help. I definitely see bigger guilds helping in a also in a bigger. So the fact that they they want to work because that's going to be their, their starting player base to me. That's the starting player base. That's the player that players that are here now ready to play. And then once, you know, we once they have those partnerships, then the onboarding of everyone will just be easier to me. Speaking speaking of partnerships, actually, because I know they um uh... their their future partnerships are coming. Some aren't even in web three yet. Now that is pretty vague because I think in five, ten years, even maybe not even ten years, under ten years. 
I think everything is going to be, every company is going to be doing this. So they do have a lot of uh, partnerships coming. We know they've been dealing with some big names. Uh, was MasterCard uh, something coming? I don't know. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of companies they're trying to work with and, and, and stuff. So uh, listen, in a few years, I think that uh, news like, that, oh, the ones that aren't in Web3, I think that's just going to be, uh, you know, everybody's going to be doing that. But yeah, let's talk about some future partnerships. Uh, what do you think they're coming in with? What do you think they're going to try to get? I know they have, game, well, IMX um, has, you know, some big connections and stuff, but GOG themselves, who do you think they're going to partner up with? What do you think they're going to do? What can they do? You know, I know we had the NRG one. I don't think that went as as well as, as they hoped, but uh, for the future ones, what do you think they got? Uh, WT, let's get that one. You're, 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 you're a knowledgeable guy. You're like, a, I don't want to say a stalker, but you're... Stalkerish. Oh, this one was tough because uh, uh, Veronica Fu talked about it, and uh, she's absolutely amazing. I, I love seeing well-spoken, confident females in the space. We need more of them. And uh, yeah, she she started talking about it. She wouldn't give any specifics, and then Derek followed up with they were going to be non Web 3.0 companies coming in. And they made it sound like they, these are really big. I would assume they are some form of esports companies, possibly some other gaming companies. Maybe uh, I, I'm I don't have a good feel on this one because <laughs> they they're they're being very tight lipped about it. I just I gotta take them at the word that's gonna be big. Yeah, Mastercard did just set up with uh, allowing th uh, transactions to be sent to to web 3.0 specifically with immutable x we know about immutable x and how big they are and uh we have our own theories of the connections that they have and they're absolutely massive in this world and i'm i won't publicly talk about them but the people in my private discord know about it and uh they've got some ties they've got some massive massive ties and i mean when i said super bowl last year I was half joking, half wishing. And I got egg on my face over it. I have the timelines shifted. But I still believe one day. I still believe one day we will see it. I'm still sticking with it. Doubling down. On Super Bowl. Okay, okay. I don't know when. It might be five. It could be 10 years. I don't know. 20, 30 years. <laughs> It'll be there. We're... <laughs> hey, I mean, Super that's a big, like, you know, yeah, I know. Well, yeah it's, it's a big, that's a big claim. That's a big claim. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I mean, I think that's pretty much uh, everything we got to go. There's tons to go over, but I mean, we could talk for hours and hours and hours. Um, uh, again, I want to talk about. I just want to say a big thank you to Tom Hawk, first of all, for coming on. That was amazing. The event you did uh, that we did to, together, I guess, last night, but it was your event. But we just hosted it on my Twitch channel. Um, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Again, I love when when I get to meet a lot of the GOG community and they get to come in and you know we get to put a face to the name and we get to actually like communicate and talk and stuff and get to know each other on a different level rather than just a username and a Discord. It's it's nice, you know. So, uh, thank you for putting it together. Uh, anything you want to say, we'll put the medium uh, article up in the in the description, guys. Check it out. Check out the uh, the event. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you'll enjoy it. Uh, anything you want to say, Tomahawk, on on closing up um, and uh, about the event or about what's going on or O Canada A or anything what which you want to talk about, man. Close it up. Well, I just really like to invite everyone to try out. Uh, to complete the GOG faction, the uh, GOG sandbox faction challenge. I have more racks. Um, there's a form. Just make sure you complete the form, send it out. It gives us feedback on where you heard about it, what we can improve uh, doing all this. Uh, really, this is I'm doing it for the community because uh, I want to build a community. I love it. I love the feedback I receive. That just helps me to build more. Uh, so the more people participate, you know, the more you're you're pushing me to better myself and build better stuff and build more and to reach out to more people to help. Um, so yeah, we're always looking for people to help building. Uh, please participate in the event. If you have any questions, uh, the, there's a channel in the GOG Discord uh, where you could go ask your questions about the event. Uh, the Medium article has all the info you need. Um, yeah, super excited to be on here with you guys. You guys are doing fantastic and nfc uh i i love it Thank this you, is way way further than where you were uh i don't even know if you guys existed a year ago <laughs> no not even <laughs> man <laughs> no not even um, for sure but but yeah so it, it's still super early and uh you know i i can't wait because because we all know we're all convinced that 
you know, this, this is where it's going and GOG is, is going to onboard these millions of players. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the passion, we've got the conviction, they've got the team, like everyone, everything's set up to succeed. Uh, so it'd be fun to see how, how we look, w what it looks like, what the NFC looks like, what the, what the sandbox look, lo looks like when we do have a game, when we do have millions of players. Uh, I'm just super excited and that keeps me going, that keeps me building the energy from all you guys, from the people participating. Uh, I just love it. So a big thank you uh, to you guys for this amazing podcast. A big thank you to the community. A big thank you for, uh, to, to the GOG team. Uh, IMX and, and everyone just to let's all go let's all keep building I, I can't Thank wait you. to see when this game gets released because I you know I know I'll tell you WT and I man we don't we do not plan on stopping and and you know uh, when this game comes out you know we'd love to be the main uh you know source of income or in uh, of information or or just you know the, the face of this stuff you know we'd love that we this is we, we have a passion for it you know so uh thank you for that man that was very very kind and and you know it'll be neat to see if we can you know in the future what 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 happens with this who knows uh wt anything you want to close up with what do you want to say man thanks for building what you're building i think it's absolutely amazing i don't see anybody else doing anywhere near what you're doing to incorporate a monster of the sandbox into the gog community and vice versa hats off to you it's going to be a wild ride the second half of this year. They got staking coming out uh, most likely before the public alpha, which is hot news. And I have a feeling there's going to be some other announcements from not just GOG, but IMX. It's just going to, con to continue to ramp up towards the end of the year and roll us into the 2023 on fire. And uh, I'm looking forward to it and looking forward to working with you guys in this uh, journey that we're on. Yeah. Huge shout out to Tom Hawk, man. Amazing job once again. And I can't wait to see what's next, man. I mean, I know your, your, your mind's always going, and I'm sure you have a lot of ideas in there, my man. So uh, that is it for this podcast, guys. Uh, if you're still here listening, thank you so much. Don't forget, we're going to put the socials down below. Uh, check out O Canada A, uh, all of our socials, you know, Twitter, all that stuff. We're going to put it all down there, guys. Give that thumbs up. Click the like button. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the of the of the podcast. Help us get the stuff out there. Uh, we appreciate everybody that you know. We got a really good crew that's behind that. You know, we get a lot of really good feedback. People love listening to these, and 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 you know, we we appreciate you guys. We appreciate the time that you guys put in. We appreciate that you guys you know care about what we have to say and you want to listen and stuff. And uh, you know, let's keep building this game together. And uh, I can't wait uh, for the future. Tom Mock, thank you again for coming on. This is the second time he's come on, and uh, I'm sure you'll be on many many more times as 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 times go. On. So, all right, guys, we are out of here. We love you, you beauties. Be safe. Peace.